Hey, man. What's up? Hey, what's going on, Albert? How are you? Uh, I'm okay. You know, just getting through. Just everybody yeah. else is trying to do the same thing. So, yeah, it's all we can do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So why why we've called a meeting today? What what's the, what's uh, what what I do you think, want to talk about? Today? I think it's a good thing. I mean, I you know I, I don't want to you know beat a dead horse, but I think it's always good to talk about how you're you know this is this all this whole situation that everybody's in. Um, how it's affecting, you know, what you do, like art wise, like, what do you, does it affect your songwriting? Can you write or you got writer's block or yeah. is it inspiring? Is it, I don't know, you know, it's uh, something that never, we've never really experienced before. Um, I, I talked to my mom in the beginning of this, who's 84 and she said that she's never had anything in her life like this. I mean, they had coupons and stuff during the war. Yeah. Um, World War II, but they never had stay at home, don't go anywhere, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, I think it, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's something we have to talk about, but I think we should try to be hopeful and positive as we can and, you know, but not be dishonest in how we are affected. You know what I mean? I like all of that. I like all of what you just said there. So, uh, do you want me? Do are we? Do you want to interview each other about what we're yeah, going through? Yeah, why not? You know, like I, <laughs> <laughs> man, yeah, it's a. Uh, um, but I, you're in New York City, mm -hmm. and although we've had this this band together. Uh, for for many years we've known each other uh, quite a few years so right. um so as you know friends and not just bandmates um just generally like like you're in new york so there's a lot of things going on in new york right now there's a lot of sick people and and the emergency rooms are full the the intensive care units are full and uh you know are you how is it affecting you uh this week i get and even on a daily basis you know and and knowing that right now could be different than yesterday and different well i mean today is around the mm -hmm. first of may i think who knows i mean yeah. i've been trapped for a month and a half in a house so yeah. um I, I think we're still around a thousand new cases a day in mm. new york and i mean it's scary i'll be i'll just be honest with that you know, like I'm lucky that I'm healthy and I'm lucky that the people I know and live with are healthy and the people on my, I have had some friends who have had it and they didn't get okay. tested, but they, cause they were told they couldn't be tested. They just needed to stay home unless they had bad yeah. circumstances. And, yeah. um, you know, and that's just me. I don't know. I mean, I know, uh, you know, a decent amount of people, but I know th at least three people who had it, who didn't get tested for it. So a thousand new cases in New York means nothing. It could be 3000. You just don't know. Um, but I think the hardest thing, I mean, being in the, I guess the epicenter of the United States of this whole thing is just trying to keep a good mindset every single day. Um, okay. You know, I'm not saying it's any more difficult for me than it is for you in Kansas City, but you know, I mean, they have, and I, I this I don't want to be too morose, but you know, like funeral homes don't have enough space. They, I mean, it's a really bad situation. Um, but I do think that. And I've always felt this, well, maybe not always, but as I've gotten older in my life, I realize and I see the resiliency of people and how we can move forward in the midst of, I don't know, darkness, I guess you would say. Um, so for me, I do the best I can to keep my head on straight. I do better at some points than other times, um, obviously. Um, I try to keep myself busy every day. I try not to sit there and just dissolve into 
endless episodes of something on Netflix, of course, unless it's Tiger King and then you can't help yourself. But, <laughs> um, that, you know, so, you know, I enjoy entertainment anyway. So, but I try to keep myself not just to, to be completely absorbed in that and to try to continue to create in some way. I, I picked up drawing again to try to maybe change my mind creatively in a way. Okay. Take a uh, detour from the usual. Yeah. Just to just kinda, about. It will like a reset, I guess. Mm. Um, because, you know, you do want something one way all this time and, and you're thinking creative, creative, creativity has to be in music, you know, if you're a musician, but I think I just uh, like Patty was like, why don't you, you used to draw? Why don't you try drawing? You're going to have time. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. So I've done some of that. Not as much as I probably should have, but it was a step in the right for create my creative brain to think about things in those terms again after all these years. So I'm um, overall though, I think I'm doing pretty well. I'm hanging in there. Um, so yeah. How about you? How are you, how are you yeah. doing in all this? Well, I'm doing pretty, pretty okay. I, I came home from extensive touring and just woke up the next day with no, with the calendar cleared off. So right. I came home from, and I knew it was going to be, it's not something that I woke up and discovered was happening. I, we knew that shows were getting, going to get taken off the calendar uh, pretty extensively, but we didn't know for how long. Right. So, so I, I kind of coasted into the, the isolation aspect of it, thinking of uh, the way I would any kind of break uh, at the beginning of this. Now, I'm going to talk about the evolution of it in a minute. But at the beginning, I was just kind of like, whew, I had bags to unpack. I had laundry to do. I'd come home from an international uh, bunch of gigs in Ukraine. And I had things to wind down from that. So my mind was occupied for days on that. I, I wasn't like, I didn't wake up thinking, oh, what am I going to do now? Uh, that came later. <laughs> right. um, so as it's gone along, uh, I've gone from, from wanting to maintain my own space, clean up, clean my gear, repack my gear, reorganize my storage, my, my workspace, set up the home studio, set up the laptop again, set up a keyboard, have my guitars handy to, to play and sing and, uh, and do things. So I, I, I established a creative space. Um, but then, then I would say that I, I spent some time hitting the wall. And so I had the physical things, the routines that, you know, slowly preparing to be here a long time. But then once, once I didn't have anything to set up anymore and things were clean, things right. were put away, I was resetting. Then I sort of, once I saw that was coming, <laughs> Then I, I spent a while thinking I either have too much to do or not enough to do. And it was, and I was fighting that there, there's things I should be doing. And there's, um, there's some projects and some, some bass playing and some singing on different, different things that I I've managed to carve out, but, but there's like, there's still a mountain of things to do. And I think that, got a little overwhelming for a while. Uh, and also knowing that the timeline of this has been stretched out from when we first got back from our touring, we thought we're still going to have gigs at the end of May or, or sure. whatever. But man, <laughs> sitting here at the beginning of May thinking, when is it going to happen? 
you know, I, I can't say it's open ended now again. So, um, so the, the reality of that has set in. Um, so what, what, what could I do? What should I do? Um, you and I have traded a few song ideas and, and we each have our creative spaces now. So, mm -hmm. so now I, I think is a good time. It's still, it's always a good time to write and, and reflect and, and do things and get things accomplished. But, but I really think the emotion of this thing uh, is going to affect the way we present songs, even existing songs that we've had. Like they're, they're sort of a, they're, they're turning a little bit. They, they've rotated one degree this way, right? Would you agree yeah, with that? I, I agree with that. Um, I think, you know, like one of, I mean, we, we, we came out with the album a, a little over a year ago and, um, a lot of that is stuff we've had it's been around for a while i actually found the original demo of waiting for the world's end which was oh wow yeah <laughs> kind of interesting um it's a lot the same uh, you know what i actually what i did was i put it in pro tools and i and i combined it with the final version so I'll, i don't know if i've sent that to you it's me singing in in my bedroom at three in the morning, really quietly, and uh -huh. in the so and the, during the chorus, it morphs into what it became. So it's actually pretty cool. I'll, I'll find that and send that to you. It's kind of amazing. Um, and I honestly, over the past few years, have had a really difficult time writing. Um, okay. Why do you think that is? I don't, I can't put my finger on it completely other than, you know, like a lot of times I write based on bad things that happened to me. Okay. Uh, it's easy. And you were having let a fewer bad things or let I was, I think, I think, you know, like I miss hanging out with you like personally and being yeah. able to play with you, but from like a, another side of the, my person person, in New York, I've really thrived in like mm -hmm. work-wise, relationship-wise, that sort of thing. And yeah. I've been pretty happy for the past six years. You've been kind of kicking ass, really. Um, well, so, maybe. I, I've been doing okay for, for yeah. from you know, like just I, real quick, like in 2014, I started a job in the camera rental business, did not knowing anything about digital cinema cameras. And now I run a company that's a rental company. Amazing. Um, so I've done all right, I think. Um, but when you're doing good, it's you just enjoy it. I think it's a it's a human nature thing. Okay. You don't. There's no. There's not a lot of need to be cathartic and get things out so you feel better about a situation. Okay. And so I didn't find many of those situations. Um, However, in the past six months or so, I started writing a little bit here and there and just pieces of this and pieces of that. But when we all got locked into our places and for New York, it was right around, I think, March 11th or something like that. Okay. Um, you start feeling of, you, there's a sense of unknown and you don't know what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. and and so I think that all the, the stuff that I'd started to put together from a music standpoint um, was accelerated because now I have the sense of, I won't say dread, I'll just say an unknown of like, for the past six years, I've pretty much known what I'm doing every day and whatever, but now there's no i don't know if i'm going to have a job in six months i don't know if the company's going to survive i don't know you know what i mean like there's lots of things that you yeah. just don't know and so as a musician you're you're lucky or i count myself lucky because i can start to express myself with other things to get those feelings out so i i started feeling like these uneasy feelings again and it helped me complete other songs that i'd started to write Okay. Um, and I think, I mean, I think I've sent you four songs at least. Mm -hmm. 
um, two of them brand new, like that I wrote inside of this and then other ones that I completed the pieces of what I did before. Right. And I think for me, it was like, um, I just, it was like, I found that place and, and, and actually the drawing and stuff actually has helped me and try to find inspiration in small things. Okay. Um, because I drew a picture of like looking outside, look, sticking my head out my window of my apartment. I see buildings. That's all I see. But I look down and I see the top of a roof of a grocery store. So you see all of the air conditioners and all that shit. And you just, you go, that's interesting. I'm going to draw that. So you have a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And so then you're like, now I'm, now I'm feeling creative and now I'm going to finish something that I started before. You know, you feel like, oh, I drew that picture. Now I want to write some music. Now I want to, I'm, I'm in that, in that, in that space. So, I mean, that's for me, that's, that's what it's done for me. Yeah. What about yeah. you? I mean, how has it affected you as far as like writing and that sort of thing? You know, I thought I would, I thought I would get back to completing a lot of unfinished business with songs and I would start some over and I, and I, and I've gotten another wave of that here recently where I think that that's going to happen. Um, and there was a while where I put out the word on social media, like if, Hey, if anybody wants a bass player on their project, I saw that. Uh, hit me up. I, I wanted something to occupy my space. And whereas you, you kind of had drawing as a bit of a springboard to, to finding again this this creativity with music uh, that you have within you um, I kind of thought just playing a playing a whole lot of bass would help me right and so I've Did had it, a, it, it actually has worked um, and it's it's taking it's it's in a progress and process of working I'll just say that so I I managed to um, uh, I reached out to a few people and asked, do you have anything on the back burner that I can help you finish? Uh, and these are certain artists. These are certain friends of mine, new and old. So um, I, I ended up playing bass on a, basically a whole album of wow. uh, songs uh, uh, by a guy in England. Uh, That's awesome. Stanworth. And I've done... I'm just getting ready to do the 10th song, I believe. He's sending me song number 10. So essentially an album. And these are older songs. And you're talking about what's helping me get there. And what's helping this individual is he's in his back catalog now thinking, man, I knew I had this song for a reason. And I never completed it. Never had a bait. He's not had a, a bass on much of the material that I've heard of his. So I kind of thought that was a good pairing, a good matchup. It got me playing bass, got me thinking about the bass, listening for connections and, and ways to draw in the, the, the melody and the rhythm and stuff. So it's kind of started an engine again uh, in me. And I, I, um, I use acoustic guitar to write my songs i i don't write a lot of them on bass and uh and i hadn't pulled out the acoustic and done much lately for the last year or so um but i've got that out again um I'm learning a few cover tunes too that's helping as well so it's sort of like it's one it's a means to an end in a way but it's not a selfish means to an end it's it's i'm feeling connected to outside people and the world uh, via this method through yeah. this way. I'm thinking, um, working through a problem solving within the songs and figuring it out what, what should be done here. What, what would I, what would I do if I had unlimited takes? And I do, I have unlimited takes. I can do a hundred takes of a song if I want to. And it, there's no, no real deadline, but I'm kind of trying to, trying to make deadlines internally at least now whereas i wasn't before everything was just so 
open. Like I have no idea when I'm going to do anything, but now I'm sort of like, I'm starting to fine tune some of that. And it's, it's, it's feeling a little better than it was a couple weeks ago. That's for sure. Good. So, Good. um, how long are we going to be, uh, in these situations? I mean, New York's going to be, going to be a while. I, right? you know, I, for my job, I've been, there's a couple, uh, there's a, uh, the mayor's office of media and entertainment, mm -hmm. which means that's the office that provides film permits and all that stuff. Okay. And so I've listened to a couple of theirs and honestly, their answer is we don't know in New York. So nobody's making movies, documentaries, commercials. Nobody. Nobody's really even, shooting. They, don't anything, issue, they, anything. they cannot okay. issue. There's a, there's a, a halt on issuing any film permits okay. until at least the end of May. And then there's a halt on large group, large gatherings of people until the end of June. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these larger sets have hundreds of people on them. Sure. So, it's, but they don't really know. They don't have an answer. So my guess is it's not going to get remotely close to normal until July, August in New York. Yeah. Um, I might come back to work just because of the company got some loans for the PPP program, which is Paycheck Protection okay. Program. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't a huge amount of money, so there's a chance I may do some work and then have to go back on furlough, which is what I'm at, which is fine. I'm okay. I'm not suffering. So That's good. Um, but so I don't know how long it's going to last. I mean, and the, the problem is, is Everybody, I, I understand the people who are frustrated. I don't want to stay in my apartment either. I want to I want to go to work. I want to meet, talk to the people I talk to. I want to solve problems. I want to help them create. I want to do all the things that I love doing in my job. Mm -hmm. But what I don't want to do is start because I'm I'm just bored and I'm tired of sitting in my in my house, and then make a lot of people more sick because we just are tired of sitting in our house and you can throw the older people to the wolves, but that doesn't solve any problems. That doesn't make you human. I mean, we should protect the people who are infirm. That's what we do. That's what we should do. And to, to throw that off is lunacy to me. Okay. I, 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 you know, like I get it though. I understand you, but I think you're wrong. I'll just say that, <laughs> you know, I mean, yep. and, 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 you know, I don't, there's no tyranny here. There's no agenda. It's protection. And I don't want my mother who's 84 to be subjected to people who don't care that she's 84. Right. You know, my, she's healthy and she needs to stay that way for the, as, however long, however many years she's got left. So, yeah. well, these, some of these people say, okay, well, she should stay home, but the rest of us are going to do, you know, that's, there's some rationale come that on. somebody's come well, up with. So what, what is that? I mean, but not to get too political in this, but so it's okay for you to go do whatever you want, but the older people yeah. should be able to, should be stayed and in, in, imprisoned and their yeah. rights should be infringed upon. That's okay. As long as yours aren't, that's complete. Yeah. If fun. you're immuno, if you're immunocompromised or you're, you're old, uh, right. get out of the way and let us live our lives. That's, that's what people are saying. But, but, you know, it's ludicrous because we are a society. And exactly. And we need to take care of every person in our society. to 120. Exactly. So for me, I don't, you know, like, I don't know how long I'm going to be in the position I'm in. I may go back to work for a while, but then if we're not getting enough business, I'll have to go back on, a, on furlough, which is, okay. it's just okay. I can survive. I will survive. I'm resourceful. I know I'm not, I know I'm going to be okay. Yeah. Um, but for, in terms of what we're talking about of creativity wise, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest and this is a scary thing. Um, there are times I thought that we would never be able to find enough songs to record another record. Right. Um, and there's times that I thought because of that, I'd be like, well, that last record was great. You know, peace. Mm -hmm. I'm out. You know, like, yeah. but yeah, if one, the one thing that I've learned through all this is that if that's not true. There's still some interesting stuff coming out of both of us. I've heard your songs. You've heard my songs. Nobody else has. Well, a few people have. 
but that I shared them with just to get their opinions on things. All right. I think it's always good to get outside opinions. Sometimes. Yeah, I call it a brain trust. I have a couple people that I call my brain trust. Yeah. So you know, I would trust with is this idea any good? You know? I yeah, I shared it with a couple people, and one person was like, "Hey, it sounds like you're trying to do a new style." And another person was like, hey, I tried to think about what style this was in, and then I realized it was you. So, <laughs> but for me, it's like, okay. Both compliments. This both part of my, yeah, this part of, they're both compliments, absolutely. This part of my life that I, you know, honestly have struggled with, I realize now it's not over. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be over. No. And that's inspiring to me in and of itself. Yeah. You know, like I I want these things to be, you know, like I want to write good songs and I, I want to try new things. And one of the things I've done is like I've downloaded like drum loops that I never would have ever used before and tried to write songs based on, you know, or, or, or adapt songs that I've already written to these new drum loops. And I've loved the results. It makes me think in a different way. It makes me, you know, I've just tried to listen to a drum beat and just write whatever comes out. And That's I realize awesome. that I still have something creative to say musically, which I, you know, there's been years in the past few years that I thought I didn't know if I had that. So that being said, it's, an, it's a good thing. This thing is actually a good thing. You know, from a creative music standpoint for, you know, what we're doing, I think it's actually been beneficial, which... Yep. If, well, the benefit is uh, time. So yeah. you're not you're not racing to work, racing home, getting a bite to eat, and going to bed. You actually hey, that's the New York life. There's some time to to breathe. Yes, and I think our music has always breathed. It's I always agree. needed needed space. There's a certain space that it needs to happen, and so we're get, you know giving it allowing something to uh, the space to, it needs is very important so creatively it's probably right like uh, so there's a bit of time um, energy there's certainly uh, things to think about and process and that can translate musically lyrically yeah. emotionally as well and um, I think yeah, and I think it's important like I think for us, I mean, we're, we were never been in like an overly political kind of band, you know, we just talk about who we are and how we feel and our songs are about how we see the world yeah. as far as like relationship wise. And I think that, um, but one of the things I found interesting about writing lyrics for songs, the newer songs is there sorry there's a there's a difference in your you adapt your internal feelings i think f to become more artistic mm. you, know, okay. you know what i mean like it's easy to write a song about s being trapped in a box or it is well you know what i'm saying like you know in this everybody's writing songs about it. in these uncertain times you know what i'm saying it's all about hey whoever wrote those piano jingles in those uncertain times commercials is hopefully rich right now i hope so yeah, good yeah. good on them i don't have a probably problem. sold it for 10 bucks and was like all right I, I don't have a problem with people doing those things i just think that it's easier to do that if you're you know like or just write apocalyptic kind of songs or hmm or whatever. But I think if you can take those feelings and adapt them and channel that into something else Ooh. that you want to say. I mean, there's a, the, one of the yeah. songs that, 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 that I wrote when this started, it's pretty, it's not nice. You know what I mean? Okay. Not nice. All right. Um, okay. it's, All right. It's basically like, hey, you know, you don't define me. You can't tell me who, who I'm supposed to be. It's none of your business, you know. And I will, I will define myself. Very good. Know? And it's not the typical song that I would necessarily write. The words are a little bit more 
have a little bit more venom in them than normal. Okay. So I, what I think is like the frustration that I feel of being trapped in a, in a box, like the one that you're seeing me in now, is that I can, I can channel that into saying something else. Okay. I, can, I can sculpt that feeling into something that says another thing that I want to say. Does that make sense? And that's our, that's, that's, that's combining things that might not be obviously combined. Yeah. It's and combining two things that aren't, they're related, but they're not, you know, you're, you're, you're pushing them together because that's, that's the art of it. Right. Yeah. So, so it's like, I don't, you know, like it, it says something that it, it's definitely, it's definitely along the terms of how I view myself and the things that I hold dear, like, you know, it's important that whoever you are, you are you. And if you let other people define who you are, you're never going to be happy. Yeah. Um, you can con try to convince yourself that that's the case. And other people try to define you all the time. And basically, I think when you're held down and, and saying you're, you're, you're d denied stimuli that you're normally denied, yeah. As a human being, you feel like this isn't right. I need more than this. Mm -hmm. And you take those feelings and say, you know what? I can do the. I can take those feelings. I can be whoever I want to be. And you can't tell me because you're on TV or you're part of the media or you're the president or whoever how I'm supposed to feel about my life. You can't define my boundaries. I define those boundaries. There you go. So that's kind of like I'm. I'm trying not, I don't want to write a, a typical song that's like, oh, I'm held down and oh my gosh, I'm so bored and whatever. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to be critical of anybody writing anything because any kind of artistic endeavor is a hard thing and go for it. I don't care if it's, if it is terrible, do it. Just cool. do it. Express yourself a hundred percent, but be a little bit more creative stop a second and think about how, what do I really want to say? What can I say with these feelings? What can I change about what I think I should say? What can I make it, how can I make it more personal instead of more generic? How can I apply it to myself and let other people know how I feel? All right. Because to me, I think as far as what you and I have always done in our music is exactly that. I'm going to tell you what I feel about this situation. Now you can take that and interpret it however you want. Mm -hmm. But if I sit here and if I, if I, if we only wrote songs about external things that had nothing personal about it, I don't think our music would be as, yeah. Um, I don't know. Big. Big. You know, like just as strong, you know what I'm saying? It wouldn't be as emotional. It wouldn't be as, it, it wouldn't have the connective tissue that we know that it has. And I think that's what we're all shooting for. And I don't want to change that. That's what, so, you know, like, I think it's a mistake for you to anyone who's creating music to change it, to be situational. It's fine to describe yourself and how you feel in that situation, but don't try to define everybody else's experience because you can't. Don't, be susceptible to just trying to say the same thing everybody else is saying because you think it's yeah. relevant. What makes you relevant okay. is you, not the circumstance. That's beautiful. That's I, I'm, I actually just had a huge light bulb go off on that. And I want to thank you for that. That's, that's, um, that's really good. Um, so as I try to, catch up on my own songs and and I'm feeling the feelings that are going on because of the situation gotta gotta wade through that long grass and and there's something there but it's sorry computer's still booting up um <laughs> but there's what do I want to say and I've always you know me I've always had problems I can write riffs I can write bass parts I can write melodies like almost infinitely <laughs> it seems but having you know 
what you want to say is where I get the writer's block. Right. But I'm going to, I'm going to try to think about your words on that, on that subject. Um, I, I think it's, I think people res respond to honesty and openness. Yeah. And unfortunately as human beings, those are our most vulnerable places. And mm. so yep. we have a tendency to not to, to hide that away and say, that's mine. And yeah. I, I think I honestly, mm -hmm. even if I gave credence to those words, they didn't really come to reality until like what we talked about on our last episode, uh, which when you share something that you, that is yours and you think of it as yours and you give it to somebody else, it becomes theirs and they make it what yeah. they want. Okay. And the important thing in that is sharing it and not thinking that just because it's yours, you need to hold on to it and not share it that they won't understand, that they won't get it. It doesn't matter if they get it because they're gonna make it into their own. So okay. you just have to be, you know, to share and be yourself and, and love that, love the people and say, because I love people, I'm gonna share my experience. And if they get it, they get it. If they don't, that's okay. But you know what, they will, they, will, they always do. The right people do. So You've still painted the picture. You've still written the, the poem or the book. Um, whether people completely understand the mind of the artist, that's okay. But they got something out of it. They still got something out of it. They got something out of looking at the painting, studying the painting, visualizing what could be happening. Um, whether that's what the artist thought about when they put it on there. It, it, it's probably it, not it rarely is it rarely is and so <laughs> the, the, the the but so the crux of it all is just <laughs> saying how you feel and sharing it yeah. and letting other people heal themselves with something that you did that you were brave enough to share and i do mean yeah. brave enough because yeah. we're you know it's a hard thing to to bury your soul to complete strangers and yeah. you know people who write people who you know write poetry and do all of that that's what they're doing and that's what we're doing you know and i think it took a long time for me to even realize that yeah yeah but you're and, one of the best at it that i know uh, well i, I appreciate that you know i but i mean i i just think that you should be yourself and and i'm not and again, like we, we thought this was going to be a short thing, but it always ends up longer for us. Yep. But I think that a lot of musicians and a lot of bands make mistakes by trying to pre-design who they're going to be. Yeah. Do you pre-design who you are on a daily basis? No, you are who you are. Whether you're an asshole or the best person in the world, that's who you are. So be the best who you are, you are. I mean, and let people see it. Some people are gonna get it and some people are not. That's not your concern. Your concern is to just be yourself and keep sharing it and just bring other people into your experience as a human being. Because mm -hmm. they're gonna wanna share their experience. And when they do that, it makes, it makes it, I don't know, it makes it all worth it. It makes it worth breathing air when you share something with somebody else and they get something out of something that you did. I don't, I mean, I've been taught that since we released the video for souvenir. I mean, I've really even more so decided be honest, just say what you feel. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be wrapped in flowery words either. Just be, just bleed it out. And just be raw if you have to. Just there it is. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, I want you to, uh, do you have any homework for me? Do you, can you say, Dave, I got some homework for you. I want you to work on this. I want you to think about this. Any, anything. It can be music. It can be personality. It can be anything. Dave, quit eating so much. No, I don't know how much you're eating, so I can't say that. Oh, very no, little, very little. Um, I don't that's know, man. I, it, that's a hard question. 
when you say, Hey dude, I need, you know, do this. I would just challenge you. I mean, I think like you said, you've always had problems when you have tried to express yourself mm -hmm. and how you feel. Yep. And I know you as a person. I mean, I consider you one of my best friends. You're like a brother and I know how you are and who you are. And I, I want you to do a better job of sharing that with people because yeah. I think that whatever fear it is that keeps you or someone else from doing that mm -hmm. is what's holding them back from better rewards. Well, I think how you said it uh, earlier, and, and that's correct, by the way, that's a correct assessment. Uh, how you said it where certain things are personal to me, so I'm going to keep them that way. I'm yeah. gonna, that, that's not for anybody else. That's not for anybody to know that I'm, you know, afraid of this or that I'm, I'm vulnerable here or that I'm overtly, you know, uh, extroverted in this part of my life, but I'm extremely introverted in this part mm -hmm. of my life. Those things have never been for other people. Um, my thoughts, my happiness my well people know my happiness they pick up on the vibe of it but for me to sit down and explain it i i just won't do it i can't do well, it well i'm not i'm not good at that either man i mean uh, i there's things about <laughs> myself that i don't like to share i mean i you know yeah it makes it difficult in relationships sometimes when you you don't think that what you're thinking is important enough to share but the person you're with just wants to know you and yeah. you don't share because you're an idiot you know <laughs> yeah speaking for myself here yeah but i think well, i think when you do that you're wrong mm -hmm. i think when i do that i'm wrong okay because all we have is i mean we don't have what are we taking with us when all this ends yeah. what are we taking with it nothing mm -hmm. and are you what are you holding on to them for Mm -hmm. because they comfort you no you're just scared mm -hmm. i'm scared and i'm a frightened little man a lot, in a lot of too, ways but i you know i think i think it gets a lot less scary when you realize that other people are scared too yeah and and you share that with them and they're and they become part of your clan you go they understand you and you feel a little less scared because other people are going through the same thing yeah. but we're so afraid to let anybody know because we think whatever we're going through is so unique that no one else has ever gone through that thing in the history of the world yeah. because it's ours and the truth is is that's not that's not the reality there's people going through things that aren't as hard as you and a lot worse than you and you can help all those people and i i know i've known you long enough to know that that's the that's the truth because you've helped me and you could help a lot more people if you were you just share that stuff it's yeah. ugly it's hard i know i don't like doing it either it, it hurts but that's it's worth it from that's my perspective on it and I would need you to be to honest in that too. If you see, feel like I'm not doing that, then you need to say, what, what the hell is this? You need to redo this. All right. What about, what about me? You got homework for me? Um, <laughs> I don't know about homework. You know, I don't know if homework was even the right word. I threw that word out earlier. I don't, I, I don't even know if that's the, the word there. I think uh, challenge, you, you said the word challenge. Mm -hmm. Here's what I would challenge you to do. Okay. I liked that a lot better than homework. It sounds like we're in school or something. Yeah. Um, a challenge, man, I, I'm really proud of you right now because you've sent me like four songs that, that I would have a few weeks ago, I would have challenged you. I know you're feeling something, send me something. That, that's what I would have challenged, but you kind of did it. And I'm kind of like, whoa, man, like my eyes are open right now to what you're going through. And um, my, if I was to have a, a, now challenge is becoming a strong word. Okay. Um, challenge is fair. Uh, uh, don't deny your creative space and your creative outlook keep keep 
doing it is what I'm, is my suggestion, <laughs> my homework for you, my challenge. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. And it's more of, of what, what you're encouraging me to do, be yourself, share something that, that, that means something to me so that others can, can feel it too because you know they're feeling it too they just th th i had a friend uh tell me man if you've got something to say there's a lot of people waiting to hear it and and that's people who've been getting to know me and and i, say, I, man, think, I know I mean, you've got I, something to say i say could it. not agree with that any more than i do right now i think yeah you got something to say you say it and one one of the things that i've you know, like, I don't know, this whole music biz is a, is a pain in the ass. With all the social media and all the stuff. But one of the things, one of the recurring themes from all the people that I look up and listen to mm -hmm. is what sets you apart is you're the only you there is. And mm -hmm. the more vulnerable you are, the more people respond to you. Mm. Yeah. And I'm sure that that is a tipping scale that where you can be fit, be falsely vulnerable to manipulate but i think that all gets found out in the end i think i think so the the thing is is you have to be willing to let people see a side of you that you'd never want them to see and okay. what that does is i think it lets them know that i'm not alone that person's just like me and they and they feel connected to you and then they feel connected to your music or whatever you do creatively and and that's what makes the difference and the truth is i mean i mean i think we both would love to be playing on huge stages in front of tens of thousands of people but if we can have a bunch of those people who really connect to our music yeah and that share that with us i think that in the end for you and i the people who we are is much more important Mm -hmm. you know i think who knows what's going to happen in the future but who cares it's the future is the future now is now so that's beautiful man i, I all this stuff and I, i'll go back and and listen to this again because there's a lot of there's a lot of sincerity a lot of honesty in here and, and our back and forth it has always been that way yeah. With, with a lot of little jokes and twists thrown in and a lot of those are just me deflecting, using something to deflect. It's the same. It doesn't take away that it's, it, it is real. And I, I always cherish. Well, I, I think. Hang and, out and chat. Yeah. And we've in, you know, in wrapping it all up, I think I like that we're doing these things and I want to yeah. keep doing them because I think it gives people a glimpse into why we are who we are as a, as as friends as brothers but also as bandmates and songwriting partners and stuff yeah. i think it gives people an insight of of that and you know yeah i'm sorry you had to listen to 30 minutes of us talking but 30 i don't know what it is it's <laughs> longer than 15 what we thought but i mean i think if you if you stick around you'll get something out of it I think you'll you feel like you're part of who we are and I hope you tell us that that's what you're feeling. I hope you're, you know, you have the guts to send us a private message on our page or whatever, you know, and tell us how you feel. If you don't want to yeah. make a comment, I don't just tell us how you feel. Tell us if we've affected you and maybe you can tell us a story that will affect us and help us. I mean, that we're all humans, we're all going, especially now we're going through this crap. Nobody wants to do it. We all have to rely on each other. And just because yep. we may be the artists writing music and you're the one who listens to it doesn't mean that you, your voice isn't just as important as ours. I believe that. I yeah. agree. I always cherish your words, Albert. And uh, let's do another topic on another day. But yeah, uh, the, these, these are evolving. These webcasts are now evolving, becoming more natural. I think today's conversation started out as a little bit of an interview uh on how we're doing but it but then it evolved and became a lot more than that it became um 
a, a heartfelt conversation between two people who care yeah. and two people who care about the world and about each other. I agree. About what we're all going through. And that, that to me is really valuable. It's valuable to me too. So whether other people get something out of it, if they, it's valuable just right here between us, what, what we've got going on. So I agree. Thanks, thanks man. I always appreciate you. Thank you, man. So I'll see you. I'll see you soon. All right. And uh, we'll have another conversation, and hopefully we can get some other people on board and get another a, a third perspective. On it.